Again, thank you everybody for coming to our Using Excel to View Your Assessment Results beginner um, webinar here. Um, just a little bit of information about who you have here today. I'm Heather Jenkins. I will be your presenter. We're going to be talking everything from sort of the nuts and bolts for Excel today. So we're happy to have you here. We also have um, Tammy Hilton is um, on the webinar today. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And we also have Annie Wallace from the NHED. She's here um, to be able to also answer any questions or um, concerns that you have about Excel and using our assessment data. Thank you for coming, everybody. All right, first and foremost, we wanna thank the New Hampshire Department of Education. They sponsor all of these webinars, so that's why you're able to come for free. Um, we're trying to get the word out as much as we can on um, how to use data. So Excel is a natural webinar for us to have to be able to show you how to download some of those results um, that you have or to, to put some of your um, assessment data into spreadsheets. So. Um, everybody is muted. We cannot hear you. Um, there are quite a few people on the call today. Um, if you could please ask any of your questions, um, Annie and Tammy are all going to be looking at the Q&A portion. Um, those questions go directly to us. The chat goes to everybody and they will take a peek at it, but it's easier for them to really monitor the Q&A. It also allows them to answer questions directly back to you a little bit easier. So um, if you could use the Q&A, that'd be great. Um, there is a hand raising feature, which is a little tricky, especially with the amount of people that we have on here, raising your hand and then trying to unmute you. Um, it does take a little bit of time. If you have specific questions at the end, we might be able to get to that, but we tend to use mostly Q&A for this. Tomorrow afternoon, about 24 hours from now, um, or from when the webinar ends, you will get an email. It will have a link to the PD certificate. It will also have um, the information about where you could find a link to the video of this webinar. We put them up on the um, Demonstrated Success YouTube site, but we also, um, Annie does a really good job of putting um, this particular Excel webinar into the Canvas site for the DOE. It just takes a little bit for us to get that information up there and going. Um, she also does a really great job of um, putting the closed captioning in on the videos. So um, there'll be all that information and transcripts and everything up on the Canvas site as well um, as um, on our um, in the email that you'll get tomorrow. And you'll also get access to all of these slides. Um, I specifically created the slides almost like a user guide. So hopefully they're um, something that you will we'll be able to use and refer back to. There will be a brief survey at the end of this webinar. So we really appreciate your feedback. We look at it all the time. This is not the first time that we've done this particular webinar. Um, and I made some just general little changes um, due to feedback that I've had before. So definitely keep the feedback coming. We really appreciate it. Today, our targets and what we're going to really try to make sure that we're focusing on are really the basics of Excel. So I am assuming that everybody here has Excel. One thing that I get a lot of questions about is, um, is this applicable to Google Sheets? Most of the information that you are going to get here is the same as it is in Google Sheets. I know a lot of folks are using Google and don't necessarily have the um, Excel um, downloaded or the Microsoft Office products. So a lot of this is similar. There's a few things that are a little bit different, but for the most part, it's the same. So we're going to talk about the basics. We're going to um, talk about how we enter things. I'm going to do a full format of a spreadsheet in Excel so that you can see how I um, would be um, really formatting and making modular assessment data look a little bit easier to um, look at and to decipher. And then we're going to go through some basic formulas as we're doing that as well. But right now, I am going to turn my camera off. Um, this way, your screen will be a little bit bigger. Um, Annie and um, Tammy will do the same so that at least you have your whole screen. Some of this is a little bit tricky to see. So um, we'll get going here. All right. This is the Excel basics overview. So really what I want to talk about is um, this is a basic Excel window. 
Um, it's got a few different components. So I just want to talk about what those are. So the first part is your title bar. So this is an untitled um, Excel um, spreadsheet here. And it's um, if there was a title in there, that's where the title would be ending up. You have your toolbars here as well. If for some reason one of them is missing, you might need to get, um, say, to view your toolbars. But for the most part, this is the way Excel defaults. These are your column headings that you have here across the top. So all of your A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way. I mean, it goes A, 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 B, A, C. It continues going, going, going. Those are your columns. And then your rows go down within the numbers. Here, that A1 right there is the cell name box. So basically, this is like any sort of um, grid that you would think about, right? So this is A, column A, this is row one. So the cell name box is going to be A1. If I clicked here, it would be C2. Um, so what happens with this is you will be able to see here the cell name box, and then anything that is in that cell will show up over here on this side here, which is the formula bar. So your formula bar might include words, your formula bar might include numbers, it might include actual formulas. Um, so that's where you'll see what is actually in that particular box um, will be displayed also at the top there. That is your cell here. And then this is your worksheet window. This particular um, Excel spreadsheet has three different worksheet tabs in it. You can have multiple sheets that um, you can have within one particular Excel document. So you'll see your worksheet tabs at the bottom. The worksheet tabs are one of the things that if you have somebody that's well-versed in Excel and they create different sheets, um, it's one of the biggest um, sort of glitches with people when they open up Excel, they think they're not seeing the data that they need to see. And it's usually because they don't have the correct sheet open. Um, so that's your sheet area and then your Zoom slider. This is how you make things bigger or smaller. Um, for me, time is going on. I keep making things bigger and bigger. Um, I used to be able to see more at like 90 to 100%, but I'm a little bit, I need a little bit more now. So um, if you need that as well, you can go down on the bottom and hit the plus or the minus there. These are the view buttons. So this is just different ways that you can view the information. And I can show you that once we get into um, the Excel spreadsheet that we're looking at. So if we're looking at the title bar here, this displays, again, the name of the spreadsheet. It's also called a workbook. Your toolbar here, these are all of the different toolbars um, that you might have, right? So we have the, um, you've got your full toolbar here. This is your menu bar here. And then this is your actual toolbar with commands. So this is it together. And then this one's called the menu bar. And then this one shows you all the commands and everything that you can use um, within those um, particular drop downs, but they're in icon form. So those are the pictures that you'll see there on that menu bar. When it comes to the column headings, an Excel spreadsheet defaults to 256 columns, right? And each column is named by that letter. And then the rows again by the numbers. Each spreadsheet has over 65,000 rows, right? And they're all go up by um, one uh, for the numbers there. That cell name box, again, this is showing your current cell that you have active. So if you're clicking on something, it will show what that is right up at the top, along with that formula bar that goes with it. For a cell, right? If we're looking at this again, D4, right? And then your worksheet tabs on the bottom, you want to make sure that you have the correct worksheet open um, if there's more than one that you're using within a particular um, file. That Zoom slider again, we're, we're used to change our viewing area. And then these view buttons. So this is that normal or standard view, which is what we were seeing. Page layout basically shows you the whole thing and what the page will look like. And then the page break view will show you where the page breaks are. Excel is a big one. A lot of times you see more on your screen than what would print, 
So you want to see where those breaks are. Um, sometimes I make columns a little bit smaller so that we can make sure that they fit all on one page rather than going on to another page. Um, so I can show you sort of how to do that. For here, those are your standard formatting. Again, very basic. We know these are the same things that you would do if you ever used Word or Excel. So most of these are pretty self, most of those are pretty self-explanatory there. But a lot of times you want to change your font or make things bold or colors or anything like that in your um, windows. That's the, the formatting that you will that you'll use. And that's right on your home screen right here. So Let's talk here about some of the spreadsheet formatting and printing. So I guess maybe I'll pause there and just make sure there aren't any questions about the general sort of portions of Excel and what that page is and the terminology. Heather, there's one question. It says, is this accessed from Google Drive? So um, this is Excel. So no, it's not necessarily accessed from Google Drive. Um, we have Google Sheets that is very similar to Excel, but all of the screenshots and what I'm going to be working in today is specifically Excel. But they're, um, like I said in the beginning, they're pretty similar for the most part. Um, so anything I'm showing you today will be pretty similar for Google Sheets. It looks like there was a follow-up comment, Heather. This is what I am following Google Sheets today. So, um, okay, I'm not totally sure what that means, but I'm assuming that you're looking at what you would want to be doing for Google Sheets. Um, so again, what you're going to be looking at today is going to be Excel, but again, a lot of the things can be done in Google Sheets. Okay, so I'm going to move on here and I want to talk a lot about um, the really taking a look at um, some data and being able to format a spreadsheet. So a lot of the things that I was talking about with the formulas and for like where the formula bar was and the cells and how to um, change, you know, font and column widths and all of this kind of stuff is what I'm going to be going through as I'm formatting this data. Now, you might not use modular assessment data. It's on the New Hampshire SAS portal, but it is really um, kind of cool data that a lot of people do use. So I thought I would use it as an example to be able to show you um, some of the formatting features that Excel has. So if I were to download a um, spreadsheet from the Cambium portal on the um, modular assessments, this happens to be a grade four math modular, it's going to look something like this. So you're going to see a lot of information here um, a lot of ones and zeros, um, a couple of, you know, bits of the information are duplicated, and maybe there's some information that we don't necessarily need. So this is the way that it comes down into Excel. And this is the way I actually like to present the data when I'm talking to folks or looking at the data myself. So there's a pretty decent difference between this and this. So we're going to go through and I'm going to go live in Excel and we're going to go through how I would get it to look pretty much like this from what was downloaded um, from the Cambium portal. So I'm going to hit right into here. Um, and this is that Excel spreadsheet. So this is the way that it um, comes down and we're able to see just general information um, about schools and districts and all of that. It gives me the information about what is um, the, the spreadsheet is for. What it tells me here as well is it's giving me um, all of my students. Obviously I took the student information and student IDs off because I'm wanted to de-identify the data, but you would have their student first and last name and their student IDs. 
It gives you a scaled score or a type of score that um, will tell you if they are low, on or above or approaching in this particular um, modular assessment. And then it will give you all the information about questions, you know, all the questions that are going through. Um, here, they're giving me five, five items the um, students perform the best on, five items they perform the worst on, and then total items here. So there's a lot of information on here. A lot of it is great, but some of it I don't necessarily need because again, it's duplicate information. So some of the things that I start doing first is I start deleting some of these columns that I really don't feel like I need um, to be able to really look at this data and to drill down into how this data could help me figure out and inform my instruction. So this student ID, I don't really care about. So you can click right here. And so when you click on the column name, it actually takes um, the whole column and highlights the whole column. If I was clicking here, it's just this one cell, the B1 cell. Now, this is an interesting thing that um, I want to make sure that, that you understand. So I'm clicking on that, and you would think that this text appears in B1 in cell B1, but actually that whole text appears in A1. It's the whole thing and it just is going across the columns. So if I um, were to take a peek at this, sometimes it gets a little bit confusing um, because some things are going across these, these areas here. So um, that's why you can always click on the cell here. Some of the things that I like to get rid of here, if I wanted to get rid of column B, again, I'm not getting rid of any of this text because it's in A1 and A2. All I do here is I can click on B and then I can right click and I can say delete. And it deleted that particular column. I also, the scaled score to me is not something that, um, it's kind of an arbitrary number. I don't know what the cut scores are. I don't know what 455 means. I don't know if they're midway through the approaching, if they're almost to the on or above. So I tend to get rid of this column and I get rid of this column here. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can do them one at a time, or I can click on B and drag and highlight to C. So now I've highlighted both of these columns, right? and I can delete these columns. But now I actually, this column, these performance counts and telling me all of this, this is not really what I'm worried about too much within a modular assessment. So I can then go and I can take this. If I hold down my shift key and hit my right arrow, it will then start moving to the right and I can start deleting other things. So now I'm on D, I can move left or right. So again, just to delete, click, drag, I can drag, drag to D, right click, delete. So now I have just my student name and then I have this item max point and standard and all of that. So I've deleted um, all the extra information here. The next part that I really don't feel like I need because I'm gonna do some formatting and put some formulas in, I don't need the five items a student performed the best on and the five items they performed the worst on. I'm going to figure that out. This has 10 items here. So I'm actually going to delete all of these columns. So click and drag, right click, delete. And now I've just got my 10 questions and the information about these questions. So this is the general information. I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger now because it just, I, I feel like the screen might be pretty small for you. Um, some of the other things that I wanna talk about here. So we've got school and district. So this you know, particular district um, has more than one school. So you can see what your school is compared to the district. I'm actually going to get rid of basically line two all the way to line 11. So again, I'm clicking and dragging on here. So I didn't, I missed one. So I'd hit my shift down narrow, but right click, delete. And now I just have this information here. A lot of, I'm going to control Z 
Just that's a that's a hint. Anytime you're using any Microsoft product or even Google, Control Z means undo. So I undid what I was taking off of here. I want to explain a little bit of what I'm taking off. This here is what um, the um, number of points that have been scored. It's an average, right? So some of the things to point out here, we've got our, our total, like our question numbers here, same down here. And then this is the number of points possible on those questions. So what happens here is when you have a two-point question, you we think it's a percent, right? It looks like it's roughly like a, a, a percent correct. It is actually the average of the points scored. So this average is for um, this particular school is 1.05 points out of two were scored by all of these students. Because as you can see, some kids scored a two, a one, or a zero. I don't want to get too much into that, but it can get really confusing when we're looking at, I like to do like a correct answer frequency to say what percentage of the um, points were scored um, or how are kids scoring. And so it gets a little bit tricky. So I just wanted to point this out before um, I start, you know, doing the formulas down on the bottom. So I am going to delete this again. And here we go. All right. So some of the information here that I want to talk about, this again is my toolbar. I'm going to use quite a bit of the stuff that's in this area here to be able to do some formatting on here. So um, I like to get rid of this information here. And um, I don't want it to be filled in anymore. So I use this little can here and I say, no, thank you. I'm all good. I don't want that. I'm also going to take this information here and I don't want any grid lines at all right now because I'm going to create them as I go. So I'm going to say, I want no border. So now I've taken the border. I've taken everything off. Now what I want to do is I want to start figuring out where students are scoring, right? Right now they're in, you know, number order or they would be in alphabetical order by name. But I want to really start looking at um, how they scored overall on this particular assessment. This assessment is not a one-to-one -one assessment. If these were all worth one point, it would be pretty easy. And I could just say, I want to do an average here. But because there are some that are worth two points and some that are worth one point, um, what I need to do is I need to take the total number of points and I need to, to add them up. So I'm just going to do a general sum formula here. So one, there's a couple different ways to do this. The way that I traditionally do it, because I do know some of the um, formulas, is anytime we have a formula, it starts with the equal sign, and we put the equal sign in, and then we um, type in, and I just start writing S for sum, and then all of the general formulas that start with S are going to show up here. Right? So I can choose sum here, and what it's going to do is it's going to tell me, like, okay, I have an open parentheses here. And now which fields do I want to actually choose? I can put in here, I can say I would like C2, right? Or C5, sorry, that's this one here. And all I have to do is click and drag here. These are the ones I want to sum. It's got the little arrow around it. I let go and then I hit return and it automatically put in this particular formula for me. I could also type this formula in. So I could have typed it in to say I wanted C5 to L5. Um, and then the other way to be able to do this is there's an auto sum over here that I could have used. So if I take that out and I say I want to sum, it's going to do the same thing. And it's basically saying I'm pulling all of that information in there. And then I just hit return and it tells me. So yeah, that's we have a couple yeah. of questions. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody is asked, will there be any instruction on vertical lookups in this webinar? No. Okay. And then no, that's there's more of an advanced one. I'm going to write it down just, and it, it, it's not going to be here, but um, 
you can definitely email and we can um, see if there's anything that we can do to help you. Okay. And then the next question is, what are the major differences between Excel client, I think is the term, i.e. the one on my Mac doc that is not online and Microsoft Excel? Oh, um, I think that Excel, I mean, like there's different versions of Excel, but for the most part, they all look like this. Um, I mean, obviously Google Slides is a little different if you're in your Google Drive. Um, the top of it looks just a little bit different. Um, but again, all of the information here, summing is summing regardless of which version of Excel or Google that you have. Averages, which I'm gonna show you, all the same. All the formatting stuff that I'm gonna show you is the same. Um, so you're able to do all of this. There is going to be one thing that I'm going to show that's a little bit more advanced on a sort. And the way that I'm going to be able to do it in Excel is going, it is not possible to do what I'm doing in Google Sheets. Um, I have not figured out a way to do it and I have tried for quite a while. Um, I think I did it one time and it was a lot of steps and it just wasn't even worth it. Um, so there's one thing that I'll show you, but I'll make it pretty clear um, that it's not able to be done in um, Google Sheets. Great, I think that's it for now. Thanks, Heather. Okay, perfect. So I showed you the sum because what I want to do is I am going to be um, really trying to figure out how students are scoring on this particular assessment. So I know that I've got a total of 12 points. I want to figure out student one and what percent they got, like what is their percentage of points that they got on this particular assessment. So the way that I'm going to do that is I am going to go over here where student one is, and I'm going to start that sum feature again. So I'm going to say equals sum, right? And then I can choose it here, and I'm going to click and drag and hit enter. So they have six points. That's all well and good, but that's not really telling me the percentage that they got. So what I want to do here is in this, now what I want to do is I want to say I want to divide it by 12. It's not a specific average because some are worth two, some are worth one. So it gets a little tricky that way. So I'm just going to divide by 12, which is a little slash 12, and hit enter. Now you can see that they've got 0.5, right? And so what I'm going to do is I want to say I want it to be a percent. I want to be able to see what exactly the percentage is. So I have this cell highlighted and I'm going to hit the percent button here. And now it's telling me they got 50% of the points on this assessment. Ah, now, so what I want to do here is I want to be able to say, I want to do this for every student. I don't want to have to do this 15 times or however 30 times to be able to do my students. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it this a little bigger so you can see. What I have here is I have 30 students and I've got this one formula, but I want this formula to go all the way down for every student. As I click on this cell, there's this little extra um, rectangle here, or square here, not rectangle, but square on the side here. And you see it turns um, my little um, plus symbol turns um, black when I do this. If I just click and drag from that little square down to my 30, it automatically does this same formula for every student so I can see how they've scored. So again, I do that. I've got my, my square on the side. I click and drag it down. So now I have my um, percentage points here. I don't love where they are. Um, I would like them to be centered so I can just click on this center button. And now I have my percentages that are in um, the middle here. So that's what each student scored. I can also see there's my standard here and all of that. I can get rid of this if I want to now and say, okay, I'm done with that because now I have all the information here for each student. I used to, um, say uh, I would put a formula in here 
And then I would refer to that formula over here, like that cell. Um, and unless it's a, a blank spreadsheet that you're filling stuff in, I haven't found it to be quite as successful as just putting it in there and then deleting it. And then so you don't have to worry about printing it or anything like that. Okay. So now I have how each student scored. The What I would like to be able to do here is I would like to be able to say, okay, I've seen how they scored. Now I want to put these in order, either from the, the student who scored the um, highest um, down to the student, student who scored the lowest or vice versa. So I am actually going to sort my um, information. And now here's where what becomes important. As I'm sorting in Excel, I want to be able to highlight the area in which I'm sorting because I want to make sure that I'm not just sorting this because I want my student information and all of this information here to go with it. So I'm going to start here with student seven and I can click and drag and highlight all the way down um, to student 30, all right? Or I can click on student one and then I can go down over here to the last one and hold my shift key and it highlights the whole thing as soon as I click on this last cell here. So now I've got this all highlighted. And now what I want to do is I want to be able to sort. There's a couple of different ways to sort. You know, we've got our menu bars here and all of that. Um, I can go onto my menu bar and sort here, but it's also one of my um, sort and filter is here. So I can click on my sort and filter and I can say A to Z or Z to A. So if I say A to Z, undo. When I use this here, it is actually not, I want to go to uh, custom sort. So what it did was it did my um, student information. It automatically chose column A, and I didn't like that. So I've got it highlighted. So if I'm going to use this over here, I'm going to use this, and I want to go to custom sort. I want this to come up. Um, it can also um, be using it from my um, toolbar up here. I can go into data, or I can go wherever here. But Basically, what I'm doing is I want to sort by this column and I want to say which column it is. Now, it's interesting because right now it's showing me all of this information and it, it's confusing. I want to say my list does not have headers. So I'm going to say no to that and then I'll see column A, B, C, and D. So again, you can go by header. Like if it was headers and the headers made sense, that would be great. I could sort by a specific header, um, but I'm unchecking that and I wanna say column B. So now I'm sorting. Again, I can choose smallest to largest or largest to smallest. I'm gonna say smallest to largest and okay. So right sure, now sure. I have my, yeah. Well, I'm so sorry. Somebody's just asking um, if you could just clarify again how you got it to make a percentage on that formula. Okay. Um, right here, you just, you could click on this particular, any cell or cells that are highlighted and you just hit this percent. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So then um, I had everything highlighted here and I just did the sort and I sorted from the student who scored the least to the student student who scored the highest on this particular assessment. So now I've got everybody in order the way that I want it. There's a couple more things that I want to do. First off, I want to insert a line because I want to, to look at which questions were the hardest for students compared to the questions that were the easiest for students. Is there a pattern um, of what students are doing for scoring or not? So what I want to do is I want the particular row to be in between six and seven. So on, um, I'm going to go over to the left to the number seven, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say insert. So now what's happened is it's inserted a row here. What I'm going to do here is I want to figure out roughly what the average score was for these particular students for 
for each question. So the way to do that is I do my equal sign again, any formula um, you put the equal sign is uh, in, and then I'm going to put average, right? So all I have to do is start typing it and then it shows up here. And then it gives me my parentheses. And now it's allowing me to highlight all of the area that I want to be able to have that average. It's highlighted. I hit enter. And now I've got this number here. To change that number to a percent, we're going to say percent here. And it looks like 87% of um, students scored um, the, got this question correct. However, it's not that simple. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you again how to take this formula and bring it across. And then I want to do a little bit of something to my formula for those two point questions. So let's pretend this was a one point question and all is well. I want to take this formula and I want to bring it all the way over for each one of my 10 questions. So again, I take that square, I click and I drag and it brings that percentage everywhere that I need it. So now I have my percentages, but as you can see, like this is a two point question. Look at all of these kids who did not get any points there. We know that this is not correct, right? So what ends up happening is if I put in here and I say, I want this to be a correct answer frequency, I have my correct answer frequency, but because this is two points, my average is not correct. I need to divide this by two. It becomes a little tricky with the two pointers. So now this looks a little bit more like, okay, roughly 43% of the kids are getting, you know, a decent score on this particular um, item. So anywhere where there's two, we have to do the divided by two divided by two. So this is a two point question and this was. So now we have a little bit more of an understanding of, okay, this is really how they're doing on each one of these questions. Again, what I really want to do for this particular area is I want to be able to center it. I just like things centered when there's numbers and data in there. So I'm clicking and dragging on these columns and I'm just hitting center here. Okay. The next thing that I want to talk about here is I've got all of this information here. Everything kind of seems to be okay. There's a couple of formatting things that I really want to um, make some changes on. Um, and what I know is that um, this is not going to fit on a particular page. I know that it's way too big. If I want to test that, again, I'm in this grid view. I could look at the page setup view so you can see this is what's happening. I clicked on the page setup view right on the bottom. This is seven, eight, nine, and 10 are going all the way on to the second page. Um, same thing here. If I look at this page break view, you can see here's my page break here. Here's page one and two. So I'm going to go back to this and I want to talk a little bit about how I might format this particular um sheet to be able to fit onto one page. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can print it and say fit on the page, but then it makes everything super tiny. Um, so I want to show you a different, couple of different things here. First and foremost, I don't need all of this to my title. So I've clicked on cell A1 and I can click up here in my formula bar and I can click and say, I want to get rid of this. I can just say, I want it to be um, click and drag, get rid of. I just want it to be math, grade four, numbers and operations, fractions A. So I know this is modular A. I know what that one is. The other thing that I would like to do is I really like for the um, information about which standard is attached to each question. But what I wanna do is I wanna be able to, I need a little bit more space. So I'm gonna highlight that whole area and I'm going to use this little A, B here, and this is orientation. So I can change my text rotation here. So what I want to do is I want my text rotation to be the text rotated up. So it's given me now a little bit more room here. Also, on this whole sheet, I don't want anything highlighted right now or bold. Um, so what I want to do is I want to click 
If I want to choose the whole sheet, I can click up in this upper left and it highlights the whole sheet. And I want to say, I don't want anything to be bold. All right. And then I can just click on the cells to get off of it. Heather. So, yep. There's a question. Um, somebody says, I'm in Cambium right now and can't seem to download the actual Excel document with all of the detailed data in the report. I'm only getting the overall scores. So they're wondering if you could back up to Cambium and show them how to download their data from there. I actually, um, I would love to, but I can't because it's, um, I can't show student data. Um, there's a demo site and I can show you, but I can give you a quick um, fix for that. As you're printing and you're choosing Excel on the left-hand side, up at the top, it says summary was summary, uh, summary and then summary with like um, additional scores or with sub scores, choose the, the one underneath that it. it defaults to just the summary. So it would default to just approaching on or above and all of that. But um, if you choose the um, with item scores, then um, you'll get that spreadsheet, the correct spreadsheet. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to start making some of my columns a little bit different width. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose the columns that I want to make a little bit smaller. I'm going to highlight those. And here's a really cool trick to make all of these columns smaller at the same time. So I've highlighted the columns. And then what I can do is I can go to any one of these columns where you see I get that little plus. If I just double click on that, it makes them all the smallest they can be. Now, that's that's all well and good. That Those are pretty small. So what I want to do is I want to also, what I can do is I can, as long as I get that plus, I can click and drag and just make them all just a little bit bigger. Or again, I could go back and I could double click again and it would be smaller. Um, so this is how you can, multiple columns can be um, changed um, for how wide they are all at the same time. If I wanted to do just one column, I could be in just that one column and say, I wanna make this one smaller as well. Maybe I wanna make my student information a little bit smaller. Again, I could double click and it would make it either as big or as small. This is making it as big as my um, particular title. I don't love that. So I would just click and drag that here. Now, this information here, now I can't see anything that is um, with this information. First thing I wanna do here is I'm going to take this information and I don't want it to have any color. So I'm going to choose white again for those. And then what I can do here, I'm going to take student out and then I'm just going to take this out. Um, now here's kind of a cool thing um, that allows you to merge some cells and center things. So I can take this and I can say, I want these two cells and I hit this merge and center, but really what I want to do, see, I have merge cells, unmerge cells. I'm just going to say merge cells here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I can say merge cells. Now I can't, do the, I can do this, but what ends up happening if I merge cells on this, it's going to merge all four of those. So you really just want to take one step at a time here. If you don't want to go up here and hit merge and center, you can use your, your control or command Y and it will make, it will do that again. It's basically like that control Y says, do it again. Um, and then we have the information here. I want to make this just a little bit bigger. And then what I want to do with these is I actually like these, I can highlight them and I can write justify them. So now I've got the information here. What I also like to do when I'm um, formatting is I don't love the way standard shows up down on the bottom here. So I want it to be centered. So right now it's all saying the bottom alignment, but I can say middle alignment or up at the top. I like middle alignment. So it moves everything kind of towards the middle. I can also um, do things like this. And I can say, I want this just a little bit bigger because I do like that correct answer frequency. And then I can highlight this and say, I want this all, all in the middle here. I also like for my correct answer frequency to have a color. So I just end up choosing, I'm a late orange girl. So 
there's how um, I would have that there. So I can use any of these features for formatting. One of the last things I like to do here is I like to highlight all the way here down to the bottom. And now I like to put my grid lines in. So I hit this little grid line here and I say all borders. And then I can go here and down. And I can either control Y or hit all borders again. So now I have the formatting the way that I like it. What I would like to see now is what is this going to look like when I actually print it? So I can do, I can go to file and I can say print and I can see what it's going to look like, right? It looks like it's all on one page or I can hit this one here and it shows me that it's all on one page. It also shows me like I could probably make it a little bit wider if I wanted to make it wider or thinner, you know, however you want to do it and whatever um, makes sense to you, um, you can do for formatting. All right. So one of the things also here, I like my title to be centered. So if I click and drag all the way over to column L where everything else ends, I can hit this just merge and center here and it merged them all. And now my title centered, I can bold it. I can make it bigger if I want to make it bigger. Um, whatever we want to do for formatting here. The last thing that I want to show you is something that's just a little bit more advanced for anybody who would like to be able to say, if I had 20 um, items here and I wanted to be able to say, I want the item that the student scored the lowest on to be here. So all of the numbers to be there and then the ones that they scored the best on on the right. So I can really start, you know, um, sorting it by that. What we can do here is I'm going to just highlight this area here. I do not need to highlight the student standard and all of that information. So what I'm going to do here, this cannot be done to my knowledge in Google Sheets. I have Googled it, I have tried it, um, and it has not worked. But what you're able to do in Excel is you're able to um, be able to sort a little bit differently. The way that we were sorting before was really um, looking down the different rows. So now if I click on this um, sort and I say custom sort here, I have a couple of different options here. So right now it's sorting by um, which column it wants to be able to do. But what I can do here is I can click options. And now I want to say, instead of sorting top to bottom, like I did here, I want to sort left to right. I highlighted all of the information that I wanted to move with it, with each other. And I'm going to say, okay. And now what I want to do is I want to say, I am actually wanting to sort by this percentage here. So I want to sort by row seven. Smallest to largest. Okay. And now I can see that question two was the hardest then question nine, then it came eight, question four, seven, six, all of that. So it it really just changed the order to say, this is um, the question that they scored the best on, and this is what they scored the worst on. Not a lot of people love doing that because they get a little bit confused because now they have to go and look and like, oh, question two. And they, a lot of people like to keep it in the order of the question, but depending on the size of your spreadsheet, you might want to be able to sort um, really by row rather than sorting by column. So I just wanted to show you that little piece there. Heather, we have a few questions that have come in. Um, okay. So the first one um, I think goes back to the question that was asked about the spreadsheets from Cambium. Um, and so someone just said, yep. I don't have those functions in my account when I try to download the data. Is that because I'm not a classroom teacher? Um, well, the, the, you cannot see data unless you have a roster. If you're a teacher or a TA, like if you're a proctor, um, the proctor, um, if you're, if you're a proctor in the system, so a non-teacher and you don't have like school-wide access or district access um, to Cambium, a TA or proctor will never be able to see data in the system. So you wouldn't have any data you could download. If you are a teacher and you're not seeing information and you've given a modular, 
then you will need those students roster to you to be able to see the information. Okay, great. Um, there's another question. I have mm -hmm. a document with sheets for several different data sets, NWEA, SAS, USNS, et cetera, and want to be able to have data for each sheet pulled for a specific student to a document. Is there a way to do this? There is. Yep. So what ends up happening? Well, it needs to be, I believe it still needs to be in the same sheet. Annie, speak up if you know um, differently. But what we tend to do is like um, for a lot of formatting that I do, I might have like three sheets that I bring in data from so that I can show um, the specific students and the students would be down the left-hand side. And then I would refer to each sheet um, but that's a that's pretty advanced formulas um, that need to be had. But um, whoever that is, um, definitely let me know. Um, I'm, my email is going to be up on the um, the Google slide, so you can email me. And if you know, we can spend a few minutes if they need to to be able to do I that. I think I think if they're in the same workbook, there is a way you can put it up, like creating a dashboard. But I'd have to look it up because it's not something. I've done in a long, long, long time. So yeah, I think I, if it's in I, the same workbook, you're okay. Yes, I I know for sure the same workbook. Um, I I could ask um, Mike if if it can be done in a completely different different document. I it's almost like you know like a merge document where you would be referring to another Excel spreadsheet, and I'm not a hundred percent certain how to do that. But if it's in the same workbook and there's a sheet that's got all the student names and then pulling their data for each assessment, um, that's possible. Okay. Uh, a few more. Where did you find the grid lines? The, the grid lines, like the um, right here, like the borders, those are all here. So this is how I made all of these borders here. These grid lines come with, with Excel. Um, and then the next one, I think seems to be a follow-up to the Cambium question. Um, there's a couple, of, if Heather, uh, well, it says, if Heather could uh, provide the click path for how to download from Cambium, that would be helpful. For example, number one, click on features and tools. Number two, click on download student results, et cetera. I've been playing with this and have not yet been a, been successful in downloading the results at this same analytical level that you were able to do. Um, okay. And then we'll, there are districts. We'll have admin. them stay on after. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We'll have okay. them stay on at the end. I'll okay. Show them. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks, Heather. Okay. Perfect. All right. So if I'm printing this, there's um, the way that you would print it is you could go up to um, file here and print. Um, it's also control P if you want. Oh, nope, 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 nope. Heather. <laughs> so file and print. My hands were not working exactly the way I wanted them to. So here's a couple of different things that you can do here. If you have a spreadsheet and it's not really fitting, and you're trying to figure it out, you're going into all of that, you can change in your page, your page setup. You can also do custom margins here. You could say narrow margins, wide margins, or what have you. Um, this is also um, a couple of places where you can go to like what the layout is and, and all of that. If you want a mar watermark on it, you can say if you wanted more than just this sheet or whatever, you could also, I really like this feature, which is save as PDF. That's what I like to do. I like people to be able to print off of a PDF. I just find it a little less overwhelming to the eye because there's no grid lines on it. Um, so that's how you print. I'm gonna pop back to the slides right now um, because I do wanna get into a little bit of information about some of the different formulas. I'm not gonna go into the formulas in Excel, but I wanna give you a little preview. Again, this is printing you know, all the different ways that you can do that. Um, 
What I want to do here is I want to show you some of the commands, some of them that I was talking about um, and some of the features then in formatting that I was doing, but in a really quick way. So these are some of the commands for Excel. This is not just Excel. This is anything um, that is Microsoft, um, like Word, Excel, um, also Google Sheets, Google Docs, and all of that. So Control A is select all, Control P, print. Control C is copy, Control X is cut, um, paste is Control V, um, paste special. Sometimes you want to paste without formatting, you want to paste without formulas or what have you. The paste special is Control Alt V. If you want to find, so this isn't a V lookup, this is just is this particular um, student in this spreadsheet? Because maybe there's so many students in the spreadsheet, you can control F and find um, a particular student. Bolding is control B and italics is control I, underline control U. This undo control Z, that repeat redo, that control Y. So when I um, am doing that, you know, sort of um, merge um, of cells, control Y, or if you had a formula that you wanted to put somewhere else as well, you could control Y and it would do it again. If you do anything in between, like tweak the size of a row or a column, your control Y will be tweaking the size of a row and column again. Um, so just know if you do anything in between, um, then you have to redo the formula or copy and paste, whatever you're going to do there. Save is control S and close is control W. Again, the Mac is our little sort of um, Windows button or the Mac button there. For formulas, here's a formula guide. So the average, this tells you exactly what you would put in for an average or a sum. If you want a sum span, there's that colon in between. If you want certain sum, like certain cells only, you would put the um, comma in between. You can do a product, so it can multiply things. So you can choose a specific range, or again, put the um, specific um, cell names with commas in between. The count if, this is really um, good for if you're looking at any sort of rubrics, or um, if there's something that's maybe worth four points, and you wanna see how many students scored one point, how many students scored two, three, four, count if is the way you wanna do it. So it would basically say um, uh, a count if, and then you could put in um, the specific number or um, see how it the number is here. Um, so this would say count if anything that's A1 to F1 has a two in it. And it would say how many that that particular, how many of those particular cells had the number two in it. So count if is something that people can use a little bit um, more frequently if there's a rubric. Any additional questions? I'll stay on um, and show you the Cambium sort of um, how to get in and print those um, particular um, spreadsheets like I um, did for today. Um, what I want to do here, again, if you are peeling off or, or um, going to be um, leaving the um, webinar, we literally it's 414, so I understand. Um, then know that um, when I close out of this, a survey will pop up. I'm not sure if you leave early if it will, but the survey will also be in your email tomorrow. Would love to hear um, any sort of feedback that you have. Um, and then this is our general information. If you have any additional questions or thoughts, definitely email me, Heather Jenkins um, at demonstratedsuccess.com. So I'm just going to pause there for a second and just make sure, Tammy, there's nothing in general that you need me to answer before I get into Cambium. I do not see any additional questions at this time, Heather. Okay, great. So I'm just going to um, escape out of here and I'm going to open up the Cambium portal. Easiest way to do that is to type in New Hampshire SAS in Google. It tends to be the first thing that comes up every once in a while for folks, the New Hampshire um, DOE website is, is coming up, but you want the Cambium one. So I'm going to click right on here. This is the um, home screen for the um, Cambium portal and everything that has to do with New Hampshire SAS testing, whether it be summatives, modulars, whatever it is. And I'm going to click on test administration. 
as soon as I click on test administration, I've got a lot of different options here. The information that I am getting is in the reporting portal. Now, no, if you have not done your test administration certification for this school year, you won't be able to see it. If you do not have any modulars that have been administered, you will see no data. If you are a teacher and you do not have students rostered to you, you will not see any data. But for those of you maybe that are school coordinators or district coordinators, you're all, you're all set, but you still need to take that test certification. Um, you don't need to have rosters. So it makes you log in. And then as I'm logging in, I have a little bit different uh, information here because I'm a state. I'm just going to go into our demo district and continue. So this is where you get to be able to choose your dashboard. So I'm going to choose my dashboard here, and I have a lot of different options, but we're talking the modular assessments. So they're called benchmarks on your dashboard. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to dashboard ELA. As soon as I see this, again, this is just a demo database. It does not have a ton of information in it and a lot of students, but to be able to print, I want to choose the modular in which I want to print. Right. And then as I'm choosing that modular, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm going into the specific school. And I tend to do, um, this is students not on any roster, so I tend to just click on performance by student. You don't have to. All you have to do over here is go to features and tools. You do want really to get either get into a roster or have the student names listed. So I go to features and tools, print. And this is where I wanted the summary and item scores. As soon as I choose summary and item scores, this right now is printing, it, it's terrible. You don't, you don't wanna print it this way. Um, even if I say save as a PDF, it's gonna look exactly like this. I don't want that. Um, I wanna save to Excel. As soon as I click that and I click confirm, it's gonna come up in my inbox. Right now it's in progress. Sometimes it takes a little time. So you wanna hit secure inbox until that doesn't say that it's processing anymore. I can click on this here. It automatically downloads it. And now I'm opening it in Excel and that's that. That was fast, but um, is there a question, Tammy, that's related to this maybe? Um, no. I don't think so. Okay. Somebody just said thank uh, you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, so hopefully that helps for you to be able to um, get into the Cambium portal and get the data that we were talking about. So I'll just hang on here for just another minute and we will um, make sure that nobody has any other questions.